Hello, my name is uh, Cristina Poggi. I'm a breast geographer. I've been dealing with the training and education in mammography for many years. This one is the second and last lesson about compression and mammography. There are still many aspects to be addressed. Let's start uh, with the, the definition of compression. It is a process by which an object is reduced in volume. In reality, the breast tissue is not compressible, since its volume does not change. It should be said, more precisely, that it is deformable. The breast shape is changed and then restored once the process is finished. In fact, we speak of elastic deformation. However, if we consider the breast as part of a wall, the thorax, then, yes, there is a decrease in volume, a very small one, caused by the lowering of the petal, which causes a viscous effusion of blood and lymph from the breast to the chest. The breast thickness decreases according to a curve as function of the applied force, following a non-linear trend, characteristic of viscoelastic materials. All materials which, under the action of a force, have a behaviour intermediate between that of soft, solid and that of fluid are defined as viscoelastic. Human tissues belong to this category. What is meant by non-linear trend? The amount of force required to reduce the breast thickness in millimeters is low at the beginning and then gradually increases. More and more force is needed to achieve a further reduction in thickness after a certain value. The response in decreasing thickness with respect to the force exerted also depends on the speed at which the compression pattern is lowered. The thickness force specific curve depends on the breast volume and its consistency, what in the first lesson we called breast compliance or compressibility. You can see here a qualitative graph that demonstrates four different responses by four different types of breasts, which I have adapted from the one I saw in a very interesting work by the Dutch colleague De Groot. The compression process could be divided in three phases, again according to the growth. First, deformation, in which the breast gradually decreases in thickness as the compression pattern lowers and it is flattened onto the detective surface, and it's measured in strength. Second, the immobilization or clumping phase, in which the paddle is held stationary. The purpose is to lock the breast. And then, the last phase, the release. As we have seen at the first lesson of this series, the effect of the applied force is not always the same. It depends on the characteristics of the breast. Compression does not take into account the breast size and compressibility. Women with small breasts are often overcompressed. They perceive a compression force up to three times higher than women with larger breasts. The tolerance is related to the surface area, but it is not all. In smaller breasts, the increase in compression force is felt much faster than what happens to women with larger breasts, where the force is distributed over a larger area. Both the first and the second phase of the compression cycle are critical for the production of high-quality mammograms. The first phase has to be implemented slowly, gradually. My advice is therefore not to use the jump technique, I mean pressing on the paddle several times until reaching the value you want. Rather, holding it down continuously, of course, lightly. If you go too fast, there may be an opposite reaction to the force, uh, force exerted, called creep.
The main reason for adopting a gradual approach, anyway, is that FFDM are based on the use of the automatic exposure control, and it is compulsory since the exposure data to produce a high-quality image in mammography are included in a very narrow range. This system include the thickness, and they work well when the thickness reduction is gradual, as a function of an equally gradual increase in the applied force. The second phase, on the other hand, has to be very fast to minimize the patient's discomfort. Remember that the radiographer has to get behind the protective glass console, and sometimes the ergonomics of the room you work in is not high. A pre-exposure is performed to determine the right setting of the exposure data, a choice of target filter, and so on. Then the exposure time are, in any case, long. We must shorten the clamping phase as much as possible. But how the compression force is measured? In the international system, force is measured in newton, more precisely in mammography, in decanewton. One decanewton is equal to ten newton, equal to one kilogram force. The kilogram force corresponds to the force exerted on one kilogram of mass in a gravitational field, that is, the weight of a kilogram. The mammography units show only the force applied, not the area over which the force is distributed. Calculating the contact area is not simple, actually. Many methods have been suggested, as this one you see here. A force distributed over an area is given in units of force per unit area, what is called pressure. It is measured in Pascal, Newton for per square meters. The use of pressure is suggested as a system that can help radiographers to standardize compression, reducing the potential variation in image quality and the risk of overcompression of small breasts. Some researchers suggest to use specific pressure range from 6 to 15 kPa. Some of them indicate as the ideal value 10 kPa, which correspond to 75 mmHg, a cheer blood pressure value. The rationale for this choice is that the rejection in thickness obtained above this value is very scarce. It is believed that Vascularization can play an important role in the lesion mischaracterization. It could explain the relation to the loss of sensitivity, which is thought to result with too high a compression. These are the compression ranges I showed to you in the first lesson. Now I can add that the response in pressure to the same compression value is very different between one breast and the other. But I believe that the main problem underlying the large variety of the amount of force applied in mammography by radiographers is the lack of standardization of the entire process. Uh, compression and positioning too. I would like to mention the 3C rule of the National uh, English Health Service Breast Screening Program. The good quality image can be achieved following it, working carefully, correctly and consistently, so it's um, in a reproducible way. In clinical practice, obtaining the adequate compression is a difficult process in which the radiographer has to consider many factors. From the studies uh, carried out in this field, it is clear that the compression force application is a choice to be attributed more to the experience, beliefs and attitudes of the single operator than to the, the patient physical characteristics. The development of a relationship of trust with the patient and the tolerance towards her discomfort certainly should be taken into account too, especially in case of diagnostic mammography for symptoms 
or for the assessment of a suspicious finding in the screening program. The uh, categorization into three groups that I propose in my teaching method might be helpful in achieving standardization, and it is based on different breast compressibility and on how easy it is to pull it away from the thorax. Breasts belonging to group A are, as explained in the first lesson, not easy to manipulate, almost hard to detach, and very attached to the thorax. The base to the chest wall is very wide, superior inferior direction, and in lateral medial direction too. The compression range proposed goes from 90 to 120 Newton. Usually a higher value is needed in CC projection than for MLO. The contrast to noise ratio of small breasts is usually high in itself. Particular attention should be paid to the patient body language in this group. There is a high probability of stiffening of the pectoralis major muscle and therefore the creation of the artifact uh, correlated, especially in MLO projection. Uh, if you like, you can take a look at the second lesson of the Artifact series video about that. The protruding body parts, ribs and collarbone, must be protected from the passage of the puzzle in this group. There are women with slender thorax. Breasts belonging to group B have a medium consistency are uh, characterized by an intermediate degree of manipulation, usually well compressible from 100 to 120 newton for CC view. From 120 and uh, 160 newton for MLO projection if necessary. Breasts belonging to group C have a low consistency. They tend to be also tertic. The compression force for CC uh, required for protection of quality images is not high, considering the thickness. In MLO sometimes we have to apply a high compression force to keep the breast in position and prevent it from falling. Uh, there is a high probability of creating artifacts from skin folds. The positioning technique that allows the reduction of the axillary th tail thickness is very important. We talk about that in the second and fourth lessons on artifacts. Standardizing positioning is important, and so is the standardization of compression, with the additional advantage of making the patient's experience constant. We know that perception of the experience lived by a woman in mammography is based on many different aspects. Dealing with it would require many more lessons. I'd like anyway to mention a few that I considered uh, essential. Professional practice self-confidence is certainly one of them. The ability to develop an effective communicative relationship with the patient, which includes the possibility to interact with her and also know how to manage her discomfort. There is a significant variability in the level of discomfort reported by patients, which is also very difficult to assess, at least in a quantitative point of view. The International Association for the Study of Pain recently defined the pain as an unpleasant a sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential damage. The pain threshold is the point at which pain begins to be felt. The pain tolerance refers to the maximum amount of pain that can be handled, tolerate, motivating the patient by providing explanation about the importance of a proper positioning and the adequate compression could be sometimes decisive to obtain a good image. 
confirming the pain sensation for the patient is equally important. Interesting to note, the pain reported includes also areas outside the breast, as you see, which therefore we have to take into account. Patient compliance affects the examination quality sometimes more than the physical factors. To conclude, even if the topic will really take a much longer time, I'd like to say that screening mammography is considered one of the greatest successes of recent years in terms of, of rejection of breast cancer mortality. This goal is achieved only when the images produced are of high quality and the breast radiographer is the key. Our role as breast radiographers is actually difficult even to be described. It includes advanced theoretical and practical competencies with a strong problem-solving skill to effectively manage the patient globally from a, an anatomical, functional and empathic point of view to get her full compliance. Skills that must be constantly updated. It is a hard job but very satisfying. Well, this is a short bibliography, as usual. Thanks for your attention. I uh, hope you have found these lessons uh, interesting. I'll be uh, waiting for all of you uh, for the next videos uh, um, after the summertime, I think. I say to you bye-bye and see you.